Hello, so here is the legacy brand map walkthrough. I'm just going to go through the questions because I find when a lot of people go through this by themselves, they may answer it differently than if I went through it with them. So it's really interesting. Um, a lot of people, when they think about a brand, they think about it in terms of themselves instead of thinking in terms of their audience. And so here's the thing, your purpose actually lies in what you give to your audience. So it's about your audience and knowing how you impact them. Um, it's not about what you want from them or the impact um, you make in relation to what you get, right? That's not impact. Impact is what you give. So here we go. So defining the purpose of your business. So the first question I ask is what are you passionate about? Now, our first instinct is probably to say writing, painting, whatever it is that you quote unquote do, right? So whatever your specialty is. Um, and this I've learned is where we have to dig deeper. So, all right, first put writing, whatever comes first to you. And then I'll ask, all right, so why are you passionate about this? Why are you passionate about writing? And then it becomes, well, because I like expressing myself and feeling things I didn't know were there. Um, so do you see how it started from something outside of me, what I'm doing, to something inside of me? So it's like, okay, so you're passionate about finding uh, feelings I didn't know were there. So the inward one is always the correct approach to go with when you're talking about purpose. We want to stick to what, what's inward when we talk about purpose. Number two, describes the feelings you get when fulfilling your passion. Okay, the feelings I get. Well, so writing, for example, I feel, hmm, You know, generally, we keep it, again, really surface level on the outside of us. Great. Happy, relieved, calm, at peace. Um, when we're fulfilling our passion, we feel... Uh, this is this is what I'm going for here. we we're, we got to answer the question. Do we feel like we are if the answer can come down to I feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing like then you found your true passion you found um what you should be looking to monetize. If you don't feel like that, I would go at the top to number one and start again. All right, so number three, now imagine you're receiving money in exchange for pursuing your passion. I ask this question because a lot of people, especially if you're creative, will feel guilt. Um, you will feel like this, that starving artist, um, whether you're a healer, a writer, a painter, a performer, we may feel like we are shouldn't accept money for our gifts. Um, uh, now, on the other hand, if you are not feeling that and you're like, no way, I feel excited. I feel like, yes, this is what I'm meant to be. It affirms that I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. That's the feeling you want. Um, but if this is just to gauge where you're at emotionally with money is the purpose of number three. Okay. So again, if number three, you're... Uh, relating to money being received from your passion as in terms of guilt or fear or anything like that. If there's any resistance, you got to visit that. That's a sign in you that you need to readjust, not necessarily to what you're doing, but you need to readjust with that relationship with yourself and receiving money. All right. With the idea of prosperity and receiving, being able to receive is really important if you want your own business. Um, next, uh, and then if you are 
excited to celebrate good keep keep going forward <laughs> and keep going on with the map and it means you're in a good place okay now number four describe the way your buyers would ideally feel about themselves after they receive what you are giving to them all right this is this is us nailing down your impact so ideally let's say i'm a writer the way my buyers would feel about themselves about themselves um, this is where a lot of people will mess up. They'll say, well, I want people to feel good and want to buy from me again. Okay, that's great, but I didn't ask what you wanted them to feel about you or your service. I need to know what you want them to feel after they experience what you give them. And they don't need to experience you after they pay for something. Listen, people experience you from the very first impression they get on social media. Um, from the messages you're putting, from the pictures you're posting, um, from how you talk. This is all what a brand does. It creates that experience and it either repels or detracts. And that's what you want. You want to polarize. You want to attract people who are qualified to work with you, who would be a good fit and repel those who aren't. So ideally how I want to feel about themselves, I'll say empowered. All right, cool. All right. So if you now a lot of people may say, well, how do how am I supposed to know everyone feels different? This is not true. Yes, everyone feels different. Okay, but it's up to us, the business owners and the brand holders and people who have missions, we set our purpose, we define our purpose, we have to make a definitive purpose, we have to attune ourselves to, uh, you know, be emotionally intelligent and say, Okay, so let me think. How do I really want people? What do I want people to take away from my experience, uh, from my presence? And that is the answer. All right. Um, number five, now that we know number four, how would lives be positively impacted? Um, by feeling the way you described number four. So, for example, Okay, now this is key. Huge copywriting tip here. Whenever people people buy feelings, that's correct, but we also need to know the benefits, the results that people will get when you are presenting an offer, okay? So a lot of people, just like in number one, you may say, "What do you, I, I'm passionate for writing or I'm passionate for artistry. And so because of that, we often say, I am a writer. I am an artist. So we sell what we do. Oh, I write. I sell my writing. I sell my poetry. That is the inappropriate way to position your brand. We need to position it in a way where we're actually, what we're delivering is not what we do. We actually deliver the impact we make. And every impact is transformational. So what's the transformation that I'm selling here is I'm... And then boom, 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 specific result. So they can, um, what, improve their relationships or leave their full-time job, right? Like, that's me. I, I help people leave their full-time job. This is the experience. I don't sell, so... You know, I filled this out as a writer when really I realized I should be doing it actually as a business coach. <laughs> so let me change this. Let me fill it out as myself. <laughs> okay.
All right, so now uh, that I filled it out as me, this is what I'm selling. I'm not selling business teaching, business coaching. I'm not selling courses. I'm not, I'm not selling um, consulting. I'm selling this. I, I don't teach. I don't teach business. I don't coach. I don't consult. This is what I do. I empower people to take action in their lives so they can leave their full-time job and become fully available to their purpose. Wouldn't you much rather buy that than buy someone who teaches business? So this is your brand purpose. This is the transformation. All right. Remember that. All right, so now set your intention for money. Number two, how would you like your excess money to contribute positive to, positively to the world around you? This is really important because money is never enough uh, to show up in business every day for yourself. Money will never be um, a good motivator to show up on days when no one's responding to you, to show up when you're constantly getting rejected, or to show up when you don't can't pay the bills. Um, a lot of us who fill out this map are not motivated by money, right? So it's important to to you to determine the purpose of the money you're going to be used. Okay, so, and here's the thing too. A lot of us want to contribute positively through donations. But I believe as business owners, we actually have this power, right? Where we can get profit. And the most powerful way to use money is to use it to advocate for others. And instead of just donating to a shelter where homelessness is still a problem or where, where animal, animal abuse and, and woman abuse or men abuse, whatever, physical violence is still a problem. You partner with an organization or create your organization or whatever, or partner with people to advocate and actually bring forward a solution. Use money from your profits to bring a solution that can, instead of helping a shelter, which caters to the symptoms of domestic violence and animal abuse, create something that caters to the root cause of domestic violence, the root cause of homelessness. And then we're creating a solution in the system where, we're, where soon it will no longer be an issue because now we're putting money to use in the right way. We're not putting money on Band-Aids, we're putting money towards uh, creating new a new system in the system, get it? So for example, um, This, this is my, this is true. Okay. Cool. How exactly would you prefer to contribute? So for me personally, again, this is important. You gotta, even if you don't know completely, it's okay. You may not know at the business plan, but just commit to something. Set the intention. It's about the intention. It's not having it all laid out perfectly. It's about the intention. Intention concretes everything that shows up in our lives. So, Um, and now this is the really cool thing. So let's say, uh, you know, the only way, by the way, we can ever become fully available to our purpose. And let's say we want to, we don't want to be chained to our computers or our phones. We need to set the intention to have a team. And I am firsthand witness to the power of having a mission and having employees and teammates who are committed to the mission above money. Um, I, in fact, have eight partners who are committed to the mission. We split revenue share. And how does it empower? I can tell you exactly how my mission empowers these people to be loyal to the business. You know, so 
So now I'm attracting people who, who feel the same vision and purpose as me. And by partnering with me, by giving their money to me, by giving their time to me, we're no longer trying to run around fulfilling our purposes alone in this world. We're coming together and we're making it happen together so we can all do what we know we are called to and fulfill our responsibility on earth and in this lifetime together. So the mission is the glue that holds everyone together. Wow. Number four, it, it would help. There we go. All right. Um, and so now here we get to map activities to make it easier to reach more people. Now, of course, this would be specific to your business. So I'm going to stop here. Um, this is something we could totally continue on a phone call um, if you're struggling. But uh, uh, I know this helped you. And I, I really look forward to I would love to know what you filled out your brand map. Um, so feel free to please share share what you um, have in your brand map to your to our Facebook communities. I would love to see what you're forming, see the vision you're holding, so we can support you in that. Talk soon.